Good evening. Welcome to Crafting with Angela. Tonight, I will show you how to create a cozy flannel scarf to help keep you cold in these long winter days. Also, I will show you how to discharge dye with bleach and turn fabric into a pillow. First, let's take a peek into my adventure at the local thrift store. Thrift stores are a great place to come to get inspiration for future craft projects. They have an eclectic mix of all different kinds of items throughout the decades, not to mention they're rather inexpensive. Let's see what we can go find today. Skirts are a great place to come to look for fabric. You get a lot of yardage for not a lot of money. This skirt would really easily turn into a cute top, shorter skirt, or a pillow. Belts are always something great to use. You can use them as straps for a purse, or even straps for a shirt. Ties are also something that you can repurpose easily. You can take them apart and use the fabric to make a skirt, or some people would even wear them as a headband. The book department's another great place to go to get inspired. You can find something that's of interest to you, page through it, and if there's anything good in it, you can cut out the pictures, collage them into your own little work of art, frame it, and hang it in your house. The game area is a really good place to come for inspiration. Look, I found a puzzle. Puzzle pieces are really good to use as pendants. You can use a couple, or you can find other game pieces that you can use. I also found some sheets of metal. Those are always fun to cut out of. A few really nice, inexpensive finds in the game department. Ceramics. They're really fun and really inspiring. This vase has a really fun texture. I kind of like it. Ooh, this plate I really like. I love the color. I love how the color fades and this texture is awesome. Do you know what else I like about plates? They break. I love going to thrift stores when I'm in need of inspiration. There's always something I've never seen before and always little surprises around every corner. No doubt there will be at least one thing that will inspire a new project. Now that you know my love of breaking things, you are most likely wondering what I'm going to do with the plate I broke. I'm going to take the broken pieces and show you how to create wire wrapped earrings. So the first thing is you need to gather all the supplies that you need. Um, you need some sort of ceramic glue. Make sure that it dries clear, not white or opaque because that won't look very good. Um, wire, any gauge, any color that you like, totally personal preference. Some wire cutters as well as some little needle nose pliers. Um, both of these you can get at any jewelry store. You need your dish, plate, whatever you decide to go with. Um, you can use mugs, anything that you want, any found objects, anything you can think of. So you want to begin by taking the pieces that you'll get when you break the plate. Um, you'll get all sorts of pieces. Um, so I like to choose something that has a lot of texture like this piece. Um, you can vary the colors. You can use multiple pieces if you would like. Um, I think for now I'm going to go with this piece. 
So you want to start by cutting a piece of wire. And then with your hands, you can just bend the wire around the piece that you chose. In order to make sure that it's tight enough, you can always squeeze it with your pliers, but you want to make sure that you don't do this too hard because the plate, glass, whatever you're using can crack and you don't want that to happen. Um, so then to secure it, you just want to wrap this way around. I always do three times because that's what I like to do. But you can do it as many or as few times as you'd like. Um, to make it more snug, you can tighten it a little bit. Um, if you'd like, you can cut another piece. And it's probably a little bit small, but you can create fun patterns with the wire. some fun lines on your piece. You always want to make sure that you don't leave any edges hanging. Um, you want to snip them. Make sure that they're not going to cut you or your ear or your neck or anything. Um, so snip them all. Then you want to bend this part so that that you can attach a fish hook earring and then you will have a lovely little pair of earrings after you do two. Oh, and when you're finished, that's when you always want to take some of the glue and that's why you want it to be clear when it dries. Um, that'll just secure your wire, make sure that the ceramic piece won't fall out. And like on these finished ones, you can't even tell that it's there. Um, I decided to add a little bead to add a little pop of color. I can show you ones that I've already done. I used mirrors when I did these. When I did these, and I used a lot of circular mirrors when I made these. So those are some fun, inspiring ways that you can make your own unique piece of jewelry. Um, you always, always want to have your own little piece. Um, I love making these because, like I said, no two are alike. Um, and these are great gifts, little gifts, and they're always will add a unique quality to any outfit. All right. Well, when we live in Wisconsin, scarves are a winter must-have. Uh, there are many different types of scarves, but I'm going to show you how to make a layered flannel scarf. When making a scarf, as with any other project, your thread is much more important than you may think it is. Let me show you how I pick out my scarf. Ooh, look at all these pretty colors. I need to match some thread to my 100% cotton fabric. In order to do that, I want to make sure that I choose cotton thread, not polyester. Cotton thread has longer staples, making it stronger, and it also won't wear into my fabric the way polyester could. The best way to choose your thread to match your fabric is to take a strand of it and lay it over your fabric. This is definitely too yellow. That's not gonna work. This thread blends perfectly with my fabric. I definitely wanna choose this. Another tip, is whenever you're hand sewing, you always want to make sure you use the thread in the way that it's wound around the spool. That way, it'll tangle less and give you a better finished product. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I have thread to make my scarf, I can show you how to make a lanyard flannel scarf. <laughs> All right, your first step is picking out your fabric. Um, <laughs> I chose a really pretty green that comes um, to pull out of this um, floral that I chose. Um, you always want two different patterns or two different colors so that they will accent each other when your scarf is finished. So I like my scarves longer. So this scarf is about six feet long and it's 10 inches wide. The way that you wanna lay it down, they're really easy to make because it's just straight lines that you're cutting. Um, it's really nice to have a set of nice rulers that you can use. Um, this has a nice right angle so that I can always get my lines perfectly straight. Um, so I have obviously already cut this out. Um, so there's two layers of the floral that I liked and then the middle layer of the green. And you wanna lay them down so that the right side is facing down and then you want your middle layer to face up and then your top layer to obviously face up as well. So the first thing that you want to do, like I have already done with this one, is to sew a half inch around the edge. Um, I've chosen a thread that disappears on my fabric. So that I won't be able to see it when I'm done. All right, so, and I decided to leave it a little bit longer on the edges so that it'll create more fringe when I'm done, because that's what's gonna happen. We're going to um, fringe everything. So that's your second step, to sew all the way around a half inch, and I left about an inch on both of the edges. Okay. Your next step is deciding what kind of pattern that you want to make on your scarf. Wherever you sew, you'll be able to cut little pieces in the negative space. I can show you on this scarf that's already finished. Um, this is like a simple diamond shape that I, that I did. Um, so I sewed X's all over the scarf. And this is showing you the finished product, um, how you'll see that second layer. And it'll also add color on the sides. So for this scarf, I chose to just do simple straight lines. So obviously very easy. Um, you wanna make sure that everything is measured properly and that everything's even. Um, you can use whatever you want. They make really nice um, washable pens that you can use or um, pens that evaporate into the air so that you won't leave lines on your fabric. I chose just to use a nice bright pink pen because it'll show up well and it'll come out as soon as I wash it. So to mark it, um, I just make the little ticks on the sides uh, and then I go down farther in the scarf and I make those same measurements. I did one inch lines, so there's a half inch seam on either side and then there's nine in the middle. Then you just want to connect dot to dot and draw your lines down the sides. And you want to do that until your entire scarf has lines all the way down. Nice bright lines that you can see easily. Then your next step is to sew on all of those lines. It's very easy sewing. Um, not hard at all. I use just a standard stitch length um, and just a regular straight stitch. So you wanna just sew on all of those lines that you have marked. When you're done with that, you wanna open up those, you wanna take your scissors and pull the fabric apart make sure that you only have the top layer in your hand, which can be a little bit tricky to do, but it's, it's not the worst. Then you wanna snip just that top layer 
and you want to cut so that you're cutting all the way down like I've already done on these so that you're opening up and exposing that second layer of flannel. I chose to do this on every other one so that it would leave some of the floral pattern intact because you don't want to lose that pretty pattern that you have on the top. So after you cut all the way down, the fun part comes where you have to snip individually every little, about every quarter inch I would say. You want to snip, snip, snip so that when you wash it, um, it frays easier. And some flannels, some fabrics will fray easier than others will. Um, but you just want to keep snipping. You may want to take breaks every now and then. Um, but you want to do that to every, every little exposed flap, flap so that um, it fringes easier. Then you want to throw it in the wash. And after you throw it in the wash, it'll give you this nice little fringe. Um, you can kind of play with it if you want it to be more. Um, you can also throw it in the wash a few more times. You can snip it more if you would like. Um, but that's what it'll look. And I think it's a really fun, fun, easy scarf. You get to pick out your own fabric. You get to pick out your own um, design. Like I said, this is an Argyle style one that I'd made. Here's just simple lines. So it's very, very fun, very easy. You can do it um, whenever you'd like. I hope that it keeps, keeps you nice and warm in the winter. Um, it's a great way. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a great way um, for everyone to stay warm, especially in our cold Wisconsin winters, is to make yourself a nice little scarf. All right. So. Um, one of my favorite ways to add my own design to a fabric is to discharge dye it with bleach. I will show you how to do this and then turn the dyed fabric into a pillow. A key component is picking fabric that will work for the discharge dyeing technique. Look at all these fun patterns and colors of cotton fabric. Today, I need to choose a cotton fabric that will work to do a bleaching discharge dyeing technique and be able to make a pillow out of. I love using cotton fabric because it's very easy to sew with. It doesn't slip and slide. So let's see what I can find. I like this pattern. It's a really fun color. However, I think that it'll be a little bit too busy when I do another dyeing technique on top of it. This would be a better choice, except it kind of has a waxy feeling. The bleach won't be able to penetrate it as well, so it won't work for my dyeing technique. Ooh, I really like this fabric. It's a really pretty color, it has a nice texture, and that will add interest when I put another dyeing technique pattern on top of it. And it's not waxy, I like this. So here is the fabric that I picked out. Um, the first thing that you have to do when doing a discharge dyeing technique is figure out what you want to make your print, what you want it to be. I decided I wanted to do an anatomical heart. Um, so you can either, if you don't enjoy drawing or sketching things out yourself, you can go um, to the stencil department at Joann's um, or anywhere and you can grab some stencils that are already made. Otherwise, you can make your own. A really easy way to make your own is to sketch out whatever you would like, um, and then you just wanna cut it out. I'll just cut out this one little piece, but you obviously want to cut out your entire pattern. And decide how large you want your pillow to be. Um, this pillow is about 11 inches high and eight, nine inches wide. 
Um, I decided I wanted it slightly angled. And then you want to make sure that you have on your old clothes and you're being very careful with what you're doing. You always want to wear a glove whenever you work with bleach. So you have your spray bottle and then you just want to lay it down. I'll normally put little weights. Um, sometimes I'll just use change to keep the pieces down. Um, and then you just want to spray and cover the entire area so that it's saturated, um, but you don't want it sopping, sopping wet. Um, especially because if you're doing an at-home stencil, um, an easy thing to do is to just use um, construction paper or like this is construction paper. So after you spray it down, you need to always let it dry. Um, I normally will let it dry for maybe a half an hour and then I'll toss it in the wash machine. That way you get the bleach out. Um, it doesn't smell like bleach anymore. It smells nice. It's fresh. Um, it won't irritate anyone's skin if they lay on the pillow or anything. So after you do that, you should have something that looks like this. I chose this fabric because I really liked the print on it um, and I thought that it would turn out really fun using the bleach and I think that it did. So what you want to do is decide which side that you like better. Um, I like this side better so I'm going to lay it right side down. You always want right sides together when you're doing a project like this. Making a pillow. So then I used, um, I used bright orange thread here so that you could see. Normally you would use a color that would match your fabric. Uh, make sure to back stitch and then you just want to do, I did a half inch seam allowance all the way around. Um, back stitch again, you want to make sure that's tight because it'll be caused um, to have some stress put on it. So then you want to flip it inside out. And you can use scissors to assist you in this, um, or a pencil. However, you have to make sure you don't poke the corners too hard, or you can send the pencil right through the corner. Um, let's kind of shake it out. Um, that's what I mean. Poke it out, but not, not too hard. Take some minutes. All right, and now you want to use some stuffing to fill it up so that your pillow is nice and fluffy. So, just kind of take it, break it into little pieces, and then you just want to stuff it on in there. And you can make pillows as fluffy or as soft as you'd like them to. Um, all right, so once your pillow is nice and full and fluffy, um, you're going to have a little part that you're going to need to sew up by hand. Um, this is just about two and a half, three inches. So you want to cut a piece of thread. You always want to use your thread the way it comes off of the spool. Um, thread was made to go that way. That's the way the spin in it goes. Um, so it will, it will fight with you less. It will thread your needles easier and it will not tangle as much. So you, um, you can take pins if you would like. Um, whenever you're choosing pins, always choose the longest, thinnest pins. Those will work the best for you. Um, and then you just want to do a really easy slip stitch side by side, back and forth, through. Okay. Careful you don't poke yourself. And you just keep doing that until the entire side is closed. 
And once you're all done, you should have a lovely pillow um, that looks something like this. The side stitching, you can't even see where I did the hand stitching. So as long as that's done properly, you don't even notice it. Um, pillows are something really fun. Um, you can add ribbons to this. You can add beads to this. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can do little fabric appliques. You can get fabric markers or fabric paints and go into the heart in more detail if you like. So I hope you enjoyed the crafts I've shared with you tonight and I hope that it, I inspired you to create some of your own. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night.